So welcome to a little tea time. I am Jarek, aka Jarius D, your favorite published author's favorite published author. And today I have the pleasure and the honor of being here at United Nonprofit with Mr. Barrington. Um, I'm going to just get straight into the interview because I know he's pressed for time. So, Mr. Barrington, let me pull up my. Greetings, y'all. How are y'all? Uh, it's a, a blessing to be here, and uh, I'm grateful for Jared to be um, in the city and doing the great things that he's, he's done so far as a published author. I'm sure he is an inspiration to so many in our city. Uh, we also have Shay in the building. She, she's over here acting shy a little bit. AKA Sweetie Pie, Millionaire Ain't Done Sweet Way, we throwing it away. Oh, oh, <laughs> all right, see, I am the amateur here. Of course, we have two that know how to do it and when to do it. Uh, so y'all y'all stay stay tuned and hit share real quick while we're coming up with the questions. Yes, definitely hit share, y'all. Hit share tonight. Um so I'm not gonna get into my tea spill because my guest he has another meeting coming up really soon. So I'm gonna get the interview in with him and um let's get to it. So tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself. Sweet. Well my name is Barrington Gibson, um Barrington Gibson the third actually and um, been in Shreveport all my life, native of Shreveport, Louisiana, and I founded a nonprofit organization called United Nonprofits Incorporated. As you know, that many of uh, Shreveport alone has a lot of nonprofit organizations. To be exact, we have 1,701 nonprofits. Um, all of those nonprofits are great, they're doing great things, and I didn't believe that we needed another nonprofit. We needed a good collaboration and unity. So, with that being said, I founded United Nonprofits Incorporated. And um, we've been, for the past seven years, um, using one of our very attractive programs, which is called SET Summer Empowerment Trip. Uh, and that's, I believe, that's something that's catching the wind of a lot of people right now. Okay. So, when you are not doing your nonprofit thing, what do you do for fun? Oh, what do I do for fun? Uh, well, I go bowling, I go out, um, shop, travel. Uh, I love to travel. Um, normally, if I'm not doing things here, I am traveling. So, yeah, that's what I do for fun. Okay, so what inspired you to develop your idea to start your own business for nonprofit? Well, I knew that there was a lack for nonprofits. Uh, if you notice, a lot of nonprofits are out here and they're doing great work. Um, but according to IRS website, they haven't billed in more than 250K. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, that tells me that out of 1,700 nonprofits, only about 10 of them have pulled in the 250K, which simply means uh, that that's not even a 10% market. That's under 5% um, who actually need. And it just says that they need a little help. Um, we need a little help. I'm not saying they, because we, I'm the one of the ones. Um, so we have to come together, collaborate on bigger issues, so that we can have CPAs and we can have the people it takes to run a nonprofit organization. Okay, love that. So, how did you decide when to establish your company? Gotcha. So I started my first nonprofit organization in 2014. Uh, and I'm still the president of that particular nonprofit organization called Oasis Outreach Group. Uh, and with that being said, uh, Oasis has been doing some phenomenal things in the MLK community. And uh, we've grown and we've grown, and, and they have a program called Wise Labs, which I am one of the facilitators of that awesome program. 
and uh, we just grown and to the point where I was like, hey, you probably need to, um, you know, I started adding people to your nine to five. I mean, excuse me, to, to Oasis, and that wasn't the vision of Oasis. So I was honest and said, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and start another one so people can be doing it the right way. So yeah, that's where I started, and that was five years ago. So. Okay, that's cool. My mom and my dad were both born and raised on the Cook Road. Wow. Okay. And right. they had me in the Cook Road. Okay. All right. So we have the Cook Road again. Yeah. Okay. All right. yeah, we do. So my mom, she's watching right now. Hey, hey, mom. So she, she's definitely very familiar with the area. Um, and it's a, so good to see someone doing something for that area right now. With all that's going on, with the things that we see in TV and in the news, yeah. so to hear that there's someone such as yourself doing something positive in that area, mm -hmm. it's really great yeah. to have someone like you being the face for our area right now. Gotcha. Um, so, how have your priorities changed since you started your business? Well, I will. I will first of all say that I, I am probably not one of the faces of, of Cooper Road. Uh, I, I serve North Louisiana, so with that being said, we have a couple people who are, I would say, some go-getters like Shay here. Uh, she was just at Cooper Road USA. Uh, she lives in Little Park in that area, that radius. Uh, and we just have, we champion people to get them whatever they need to be successful. And Shay is one of those ones who's uh, heavily involved in the Cooper Road area where she's doing almost everything that you can name on. So if there's anything going on with the community, you can probably come to show that she'll be able to share. Okay. <laughs> They're probably still here. <laughs> so, because I know that y'all were having an event yeah. this past weekend. Yes. Um, can you just elaborate more on that event from this past weekend? Basically, it was the Cooper Road USA, the um, 20th anniversary. Everybody came and we had fun. It was no violence, none of that. Um, we promote non-violence. Yes. So, um, Basically, we just all got together as a community and the people on the outside of the community, and we became one for the day. Basically, we all family, because once you come to the Cooper Road, you always Cooper Road. All right. I love that. So, What's the saying you can't be born in? What, I, I, okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't good with the saying, y'all. <laughs> so what challenges did you overcome on your journey to starting? Uh, well, of course, with any nonprofit or business, for profit business, um, you run into what uh, most people run into, which is financial challenges, startup costs. Uh, startup costs for nonprofits are, are very steep uh, when you want to start off the correct way having a CPA, having a lawyer, having all of those things, all those people on, on retainer is very expensive. So uh, that's one of the hurdles that I believe. Uh, We've overcome, we've overcome, and I want to help other nonprofits overcome that same thing, whether we're working together uh, collaboratively, um, because there's so many funds out there that we could basically just ask for, um, and we can have them at our fingertips. So instead of us going out and serving the community out of our own pocket, we can actually get the dollars that's allocated towards that so that we can use it towards what they can. Okay. Um, so, what strategies did you use first to market your business? Facebook. Facebook was the prime time. Uh, we were in the pandemic, so it, it wasn't nothing pretty much else. I think Facebook stock went up like triple. Um, Big. Because um, Big. We, you know, nobody could do anything. Uh, one of the one of the reasons, the problems that kind of ignited my idea was when we hit the when we hit the nonprofit scene. Excuse me, when we hit the pandemic, um, nobody knew who was the teachers. Nobody knew who the tutors were. Who, nobody knew where to get food from. Nobody knew, especially I don't know if y'all remember that time when we ran out of toilet tissue. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew where to get stuff from. Uh, and I was just like, we have too many people that are doing good things and nobody knows where to get it from. Um, because we have people who are, we have a uh, diaper, uh, diaper banquet, uh, what do you call it? Diaper, diaper banquet. Day. Yeah, we have diaper days. What a pantry. Pantries. What they have pantry. diaper pantries. And we have um, Northwest Louisiana food pantry. And we have so many people that are doing great things, but you don't know that if, if it hasn't been exposed to it. So that our job was to come in and expose everybody. Okay, so 
the next question is how would you define success? Uh, uh, good. Um, how would I define success? I would say um, walking in your purpose. Simple. Walking in your purpose. I believe that you will become a successful person um, when you're walking truly in your in your calling and your purpose. Mm -hmm. um, Get the leeches off of you. Them, them are people that is negative. I call them leeches because they will suck out every happy bone in your body. Yes. All right, you can go on. Yes, yes, ask as well. Yes. Beware of the strippers, the people who try to take everything from you. Mm -hmm. um, so beware of those people. But And ultimately, when you're focused on your purpose and in your purpose, you don't really have time to pay attention to who's on you and who's not. Um, there's so many people who are so focused on their purpose. Uh, for example, um, you know, Steve Harvey or somebody of that magnitude. Mm -hmm. If somebody steals two dollars from me, uh, he's probably going to be like, yeah, I know this, but you know what? Go and have the two dollars because, you know, the two dollars is nothing and you have to pay millions in taxes. So uh, with that being said, uh, that's the same thing. When we're in our purpose, we become the most successful human beings possible. Okay. I absolutely love that. Um, final question, and then we're going to play candy or corn. Okay. So what's the best advice you can give someone thinking about starting a business or pursuing their dream? Write it out. Um, that is the best advice that I can give is writing it out because most people have it in their head, but they do not have it in their mind. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what you need when you need it, you can't. Somebody can walk up to you. I, I mentor kids all the time. Uh, and I said, how much money you need to do that? And they're just like, uh, uh, like this, 100000 And then if you can't show me what you're going to spend 100000 that means that you still don't know. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to have the intrinsic things back. So if somebody was to ask me, hey, DJ, how much money you need to run your 99 profits right now? I'll tell you it's $22,000, $21,000 a month. And if you break that down, it's only 35 Excuse me, it's only six hundred and fifty people thirty five dollars a month. So I can tell you how they're gonna use that money versus uh, somebody saying, Oh, I need three hundred thousand dollars. Why do you need it? Uh, so with that being said, I would say write it down, make sure that you have it in black and white. Okay. So fell in love with this guy um at an event a couple of months ago. Okay. Um we were out with I want to say Dory, Dory, Dory and Ford, D4 Entertainment, and she hosted an event where I got to meet the panelists, um, and he was one of the panelists, and I started to do my research on, I've got to get him on the show. What he does is important for the community, and someone like me who's thinking about starting a nonprofit, I have an idea for a nonprofit, we end up working hard with. Um, I would love for us to bring um, this idea to life where we could do something for other artists here, mm -hmm. for like a, um, a, an artist development mm -hmm. of that sort. Um, if you are familiar with the Trap Museum out in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. I would love for us to bring something like that here mm -hmm. for working artists who can bring their work to a particular area where we can put their work on display gotcha. and people can go in and view their work. Gotcha. Um, it could definitely be a fee mm -hmm. to go in and view that work gotcha. and artists can continue to expand their brand by Absolutely. putting their art on display, always going in, updating yeah. the actual exhibit itself. Gotcha. Um, I, this idea has been seeping on my brain, I want to say, since I went to Atlanta in wow. 2019. Wow. Wow. So. So you know how much it'll cost to run that? Um, I got my paper. Okay. I got it on paper. Okay. Right. I just you ain't got put, it on paper. I just <laughs> ain't put some prices okay. there. Okay. Okay. We yes. gonna get that worked Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Um, but I definitely would love to see how this would be something because I've been a working artist for five years on paper for a year, and I have had the opportunity to interview. I can say maybe close to a hundred artists. Wow. And business owners here in the city, as well as in Houston, um, Atlanta, Georgia, the state of Washington, um, and in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So 
with that, I thought that it would be a great idea for me to, to compose a place where painters and musicians and just great minds who are building a brand for them to have a place where they can go and exhibit their brand and exhibit their art. I agree. And this is why collaboration is so needed is because what you're speaking of, there's our there's funds for it. You mm -hmm. don't have to pay a dime to start. Um, you know, there's funds through for regional arts councils called Shrek. Um, it's somebody that you can contact. Or I'm a member of Shrek. Oh, good. All right. Well, hey. So that's somebody that, you know, they have grants. Mm -hmm. So those grants can be allocated towards uh, the art museum that you're speaking of, whether it's Shrek track. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is it, trap? Trap. 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 <laughs> but it would not necessarily oh. be a trap museum. That's oh, okay. T.I. Oh, that's T.I. Okay, yeah. We can't I can't steal. steal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't trademark that. That's right. I but I, um, I definitely would love to see something like that come here for our city. Right. Um, there is definitely, I want to say, a place for that, especially for African-American artists. Absolutely. Um, I would love to allocate something like this for African-American artists because we're already underrated. And I would love to see how we can take that as big as if we can make it in Shreveport. Yeah. There's um, another guy named uh, Drake and Dunn who has some kind of called Artish mm -hmm. um, that he's, I believe, building and it's, and it's building right now. So that could be something you can connect with okay. and help him in his building stage and he can help you in your building stage and we just made it together. Okay, I would have to network with him on that. Um, so we're going to move on to Candy or Corn because I know you're, you're pressed for time. Yes. So I'm going to ask you about a particular candy. You can either say candy if you eat candy uh -huh. or corn if you will not eat the candy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's and go. Go. you can join in too. So All right. Here we go. The first candy is Gobstopper. Um, corn. I, I will eat that candy. I will eat that candy. Okay. It's like a sweet tart, right? It's something like a sweet okay. tart. Um, the next one is 100 grand. Um, oh, we don't eat that. I want corns. Corns. <laughs> 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 what you call it? We don't eat corns. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next one is candy corn. Uh-uh, corn. corn. We don't eat it. Okay. Yes. Um, you don't like candy corn? Give me your candy corn. <laughs> the next one is Rolo. No, we're going corn. No, they're okay. corn. Keith Barr. Corn. Never heard of it. Mike and I. Oh, we oh, eat it. Yeah. Okay. Mounds. Uh, I don't know corn. I don't know corn. Corn. Okay. Skittles. Oh, we eat it. Twix. Oh, we definitely eat it. I I like the white chocolate Twix over the. What? Well, yeah, they have white chocolate. They do. The white chocolate. And I the, need to go to Sam's. I can't go to the regular <laughs> And the final candy is gummy bears. Oh, oh we eat this. Yes, So that's it. Um, I want to thank my guest tonight, Mr. Barrington and Miss Sweetie Pie for... And remember, if it ain't done a sweetie way, we throw it away. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um... I got to thank them for being here tonight. They're about to get start their meeting. So I am about to get ready to sign off. Um, so before I go, like I always say, y'all remember to be great on purpose and not on accident. The future is now. I am your guest, Jarek, a.k.a. Jarius D, your favorite published author's favorite published author. Y'all be well and be blessed. Hi, Mom. I love you. I gotta go, y'all. Y'all be well. <laughs>